and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix. There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. and find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Keep watching for lots of knitting and crochet on Yarn Lane. You don't need to change channels. Pop the kettle on and meet us back here in a couple of minutes. You can also watch on the Yarn Lane YouTube channel and Facebook Live. 
To get a sneaky peek of the products featured on the show and shop, please go to the Yarn Lane website at www.yarnlane.com or via our UK call centre on 0800 4 700 600. And remember, if you've already shopped with Sewing Street today, you won't pay any more postage and packaging for shopping with Yarn Lane because it's 1 p.m.p. across both channels all day. Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only dedicated shopping channel, no, the only shopping channel dedicated to everything yarn, crochet, knitting, toys, you name it, we do it. Sam Sabido is in the building. Now, if you've not been in watching when Sam's been on before, we always have sellout shows with Sam. And look, look at this. Isn't it brilliant? I love it. I love it so much. This is Rainbow. Now, what I'm going to do before we go to Sam, I'm going to take you to the website and I'm going to show you, because we've got them in children's, we've got three colourways, all of them in children's, all of them in adults. Already, the adult ones, two especially, are absolutely flying out. So I don't want you to miss out. So let you go to the website, www.yarnlane.com. Click on Watch the Show Live. Right, and then you go underneath, 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 underneath. Keep going. To Everything is on Show Deals. Ev right, okay, stop. So the blue one there, the first one there, is a children's one, Blue Skies. Then we've got Children Rainbow, have we? Oh, it's, oh you said children's. Adult Blue... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So there's the children ones up there in the bundle. Then we go to Adult Blue Skies. There it is. That's the one on the mannequin behind me. Then with next one, you can read. There's the rainbow one. That's the one I'm wearing. Lovely. Children's Rainbow, Adult Rainbow, and then we also have the Blossom, Children in Blossom and Adult in Blossom. They're all the same. They're like a hooded cardigan. They're beautiful and they're really, really comfy. Okay, so I've got, what I'm wearing is the Rainbow Adult in the biggest size. But we'll talk, we'll talk you through all the sizes. I just didn't want you to miss out. Okay, so this is Rainbow Adult, $34.99. And I'll show you what you get for this. That's why I need my glasses. So all the adult ones are near me. Rainbow Adult is here, right? So in here, you get all the yarn you need. You get the instructions. You need your own crochet hook. And you need to buy buttons. But I've got those coming up in a second, right? So, oh, these are cute. So they're all King Cole, 100% acrylic. So let's have Turquoise, turquoise. I won't get all of these. Oh, that's a lovely colour, isn't it? Isn't it funny? They look different when they're... Cerise. Cerise. That one must be gold. Mustard. Wrong, wrong again, John. Mustard. Mustard. That's the same as one we had before. That's nice. What's that one? Oh, that's Cerise again. Now, isn't that funny? Right, okay. Then we've got this one, which is Violet. 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 I'm not going to do this on all of them. We'll be here all the show. Then we've got Platinum. You've got loads of platinum because of the background. And you get all the instructions. There's all the instructions. You need a crochet hook, and we'll talk about sizes in a second. And you need your buttons. I've got some buttons coming up in a second. So that one there is Rainbow Adult. That's that one there. We also have Rainbow Children, or Child. And we'll talk about the sizes. I'll go through all the sizes with you with Sam in a second. I just want you to see everything. Rainbow Children is the most popular of the children's sizes. Isn't that funny? Oh, there's only seven left. There's only seven left. So how many, how many balls do you get in there? You get 13 balls in the children's one. 13 when balls. In, I'm not going to get them right because you've just seen all the <laughs> you get. And how many did you get? And 20 in the adult. 20 in the adult, 13 in the child there. Actually, let's talk about the size now. Hello, Sam, by the Hello. Way. Hello. 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 Um, Size-wise, children's. Children's kit caters for sizes 1 to 12. All in one, that all whole... In, so that kit gives you all the yarn you need up to the age of 12. So you're not going to use all the yarn so if you make it for a one year If you're making a dinky one, a 1 to 2, 2 to 3, you've probably got enough yarn to make two. Oh, so, fantastic. You We've know, got twins, so If you've got twins or children that are just sort of 18 months apart, I'm sure you've got enough in there to make one okay, for so each that, of them. Okay, so that's them. So 1 to 12 is children, so yeah. I'm presuming adults. And adults caters for 13 up to adults extra large. So how does that... So it goes. So what, what, in the pattern, so the pattern is identical in children's and adults kits. Right. So your pattern has got the adjustments you need for age one up to 
you know, adult 100. Right. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so every pattern is the same. So oh, see, whichever see. one you buy, you've got all of those adjustments in there. So if you buy the adult one and then you want to go and buy more yarn and make a child's one. Oh, so if, you've you, got if enough, you buy a child's but, one, in yeah. that pattern, yeah. there's a pattern for the adult one. Yeah. You didn't have enough yarn to make the no. but you could use your stash or whatever. Exactly. But some people would use your pattern and then just make it with all of the yarns they've got exactly. left at home or something, wouldn't yeah. they? So, so what, how do the sizes work for the adults? And I've got extra large. Yes, say. yes, you've got on the, yeah, I've called it large, but it, it caters for sizes 18 plus. Yeah. So I'm a size 20. It fits me really comfortably. Okay. Well, it fits um, me. It, it's, I, it you feels, commented it's when perfect, you put it on that it yeah. was a, a big size. No, no, which no is this great. is the perfect yeah. size for yeah. me because it's, yeah. it's got, it's, I don't like anything exactly like that. I like exactly it. it's just adorable. so i just really wanted it yeah for me as well i wanted it to be nice and cozy yes. um oh so is this yours then so that's mine oh, yeah okay. <laughs> i'll be wearing that on the school run <laughs> what are you going to do the school run after i've gone home in it <laughs> yeah. isn't it lovely oh now now but, is it all right no, no, because she likes a hood to lie properly. <laughs> right, so this is rainbow. Yes, this is rainbow. that's rainbow. You're I'm wearing, wearing blossom. Yes. So let's do blossom yeah. next then. So blossom is here. Adult blossom is the most popular by far. Oh, oh. there were two. <laughs> Did you? Oh, no, hang on. No, 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 more than two. Over half the stock. Over half the stock is gone. That's Hannah reading her computer wrong. <laughs> then the, that's adult in Blossom. So if you want to twirl, you're Blossom, aren't you? Yeah. So you've, okay. Now the hood, I've given them the choice in the pattern about whether they put a hood on or not. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, the hood is optional. You could do it V-neck, which is what the Blue Sky is oh, made Oh, you see, I in. love it, the hood. So I uh, love the hood as well. Okay. But if you don't want the hood, then you don't have to. So, so now what size are you wearing? So I'm wearing the medium, which is why it's not done up. <laughs> <laughs> so Terry ann made this sample for okay, me. Lovely. So this is for her. But if, if you might not want to do it up. You no, might no, it still actually shrug, fits surprisingly works, well. It? I was quite pleased. So, yeah, no, yeah. that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Blossom in adult. And we also have in blossom in child so that's this oh one Lord. so this has been made for a nine to ten year old right uh, again with the hood but again that's optional yeah um so exactly the same yarn colors so i mean twinning's quite a big thing at the moment yeah, isn't no, isn't it? It, so i was just it? thinking it's so lovely if you can make one for Everyone in your family. <laughs> Yet to convince my 13-year-old daughter, but you know. Oh, she, she, not, and she yeah. antique. Well, doesn't crochet. want to look the same as mummy. Oh, oh, she's not crochet. She doesn't want, she doesn't want to look like more you. That, yeah. Oh. So, uh, so yeah. That's so the that's the nine child to ten. Blossom. Yeah. And that's age nine to ten. Nine yeah. to ten. Yeah. Okay. So um, just show the rain, the rainbow child that you had. Which go back now to rainbow child. So cute. Because I've got the rainbow adult on that. Now you see, it does look lovely, doesn't it, without the hood as well. So this one's got the V-neck on it. So. Um, my friend Lindsay made this for her daughter, and she's made the age five to six, as far as I remember, although her daughter's um, four, I think. Is that the one you've got in the photo? That's in the photo, yeah, yeah. So, and again, the oh. <laughs> She looks like she's going to be a rock chick, isn't she? She's, she's beautiful, she's isn't gorgeous. she? Like a model, yeah. So now, the, but that's no hood. No hood. And this a V-neck. The V-neck, so if I just turn it around, no hood. Right. And so in the pattern, you've got the instructions for both, for adult and children. I love the way children. the neck, because it's not just straightforward V-neck, is it? it's got kind of sweep down into yeah, it. Yeah, so it's edged all the way around. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you can also play about with the edging. I've written the instructions. You've got this granny stripe here, and then you've got the ribbing. So yours has got the granny stripe edging on the bottom yep. as well in different colours. Beautiful. So, yeah. Okay, so then let's move on to, right, the one that's on my mannequin here. This is your blue skies in your adult, yeah. but with the V-neck. That's right. So my friend Jenny made that one. And she oh, wanted a V-neck and she's also added the pockets, which you've also got in the pattern. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, you haven't got them, afraid. Pockets, I will no. add them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't that cute? So if you could have it without the hood, but with pockets instead. Yeah. Is there enough yarn to do the hooded one and do a pocket? Yes. Okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. So this is Blue Skies. Now, in the pattern... You get, you get the pattern for the hood. You're not buying just the V-neck. You've got the choice of the V-neck or the hood, haven't you, on that? So That's this right. is the Blue Skies, it, the adult, but done in a V-neck. We also have it available for children. Now, we haven't got that no one here. No sample, I'm afraid. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So now, so we also got, so that's the adult Blue Skies. We've also got the children Blue Skies. We haven't got a picture of that one, but it's the same colourway, exactly the same colourway, but for children. That's the blue skies one. Very vibrant, the blue one. And the blue adult one is very, very popular as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
I won't have the blue adults gone, right? Now, what you will need, if that's all the kits, you will need to buy some buttons. There are no buttons in the kit, so you'll need to buy some buttons. You might have your own buttons. We're just offering up these lovely toggles. Pack of five. It's only five on a cardigan. Yeah. <laughs> For one ninety. Oh, that's a good little buy, isn't it? Because I love little toggles like that. So you can get five in there. Have you got the same size toggles on the children's? Yes, got on the yeah, they're yet? three centimetres. Fantastic. Right, I will keep you. Hannah's about to shout down my earpiece of because they're, they're going to start flying out even more so now that we're going to start the demonstration. What are you going to show us to start with? So I'm going to, first I want to talk a bit even more about sizing. Okay, and then perfect. I'll yeah. go through sort of the various stages, if yeah. that's okay. Yeah. So it's a really comprehensive pattern. So you've got kind of 14 pages of it. So there's loads of instructions in there. Perfect. Um, as I said, every pattern in every kit includes the instructions for age 1 to 12. Um, and then adults, you've got adults small. So my daughter's 13, she wears a small adult. So I've kind yes. of encompassed the teenagers into the small adult. Um, and then you've got the medium sized adult um, and the large adult. So that is all in the pattern, regardless of which kit you buy. Right, okay, I'm listening to you, I'm just as logging you, in. As I thing. said, you've also got the instructions for the hood or the V-neck. Um, and then different edging options and the pockets. So there's loads, at the beginning of making your pattern, there's loads of decisions that you can make. To Sorry to interrupt it. too, Blossom Adult is about to sell out. About to sell out Blossom Adult. And over half of Blossom Child's gone as well, so maybe there is some twinning going on there. <laughs> I, I love the idea of twinning. I okay. really want to make one for everyone in my family. But, you know, watch this space, didn't have time. <laughs> and hang, but I didn't have time, so but the 13-year-old saying no at the 13 moment. 13-year-old not impressed, yeah. What about all the others? I think I could convince my 9-year-old daughter. In fact, I made one for her that not in these colours as my first prototype. She right. wanted one. So. But have you got older, an older yeah, son? Yeah, then I've got, an, I've got another son who's 11 and a 16-year-old, so mm, they might be questioning The 11-year-old would say no. <laughs> yeah. The 16-year-old, depending I think He might, might be able to make it cool. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> and husband? No, I think he's a no. <laughs> <laughs> but he was in one photo. Where, he did not wear the these. jumper. Yeah, yeah, he did wear the jumper. Oh. He might and wear it to humour me. Exactly. But. Okay. Keep going then. You okay. Keep going. And then the also the blossom. Um, not what I was going to say. Sorry, I got distracted. The blossom one that John's wearing. I, I what had I'm yarn left over, so I've had a, already had because I've been showing it on social media a question from a lady: could it go even larger? There, there was loads of yarn left over. In fact, what I've got in my little basket here is what was left over from making that. So and how it could many, be bigger again. How many square? How many more granny squares could you make out with? Out of I that? think you could probably make another 10, 15 oh, out of that. Wow. That's a guess, though. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Don't hold it yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also, there's another way of making it bigger, which I'll talk about shortly. Perfect. So it's a really flexible pattern so I wish I'd thought to call it the ultimate granny because in my mind that's what it's oh. become but I've called it casual granny cardi because you can wear it anywhere right so first thing to decide is what size you want and on the first page of the pattern you've got this grid so you've got this table right. so you need to have a look at the table and as you can see it goes from one to two up to adult large right. and decide on here it's also got some measurements uh, which are width, so across, <laughs> as if you were measuring your child across the width, right. and length. So if you wanted to measure first, you could do. Um, and then from that, you decide what size, and that in, then tells you what hook size to use, how many squares you need to make, and then most importantly, how many rounds for each square. Right. So once you've got that pattern and you're looking at the size you want to make, you then need to decide how many rounds each square mate has and which hook size you're using to make it. Right. So for the tiniest one, for the one to two, it's a three millimetre hook. So, and as you can see, you just do three rounds of a square. And so I'm just trying to see, yes, that's what, and that's what's been, um, what Lindsay's used for the child's one here right. if you can see it's just got the two colors there and then the main color oh the yes, yes so yes. that's how i've changed the sizing one of the ways i've changed the sizing okay. is the number of rounds you do yeah. so you need to decide that all before you start okay then you can calculate how many squares you need to make dependent on whether you want a hood and pockets right but that's all on the chart all it's in all the chart you're you, talked through that stage by stage mm -hmm. in the pattern and then when you know how many squares you want to make 
you then just you've got four colorways so you then work out how many in each colorway oh, oh of course because they're all bit they're, each they're all a little like bit the different same yarns but in different order exactly yeah. so i've just i've brought along all the little squares to show you some of the um difference in the okay. sizing so if you're looking for the hooks they're making. all on the website underneath us hannah's thrown them put them all through so they're all there underneath if you haven't already got them so if you have a look at the um, description of the cardigan before you buy it, it tells you what hook size you need for which age group and which oh, adult size. Yeah. Um, but I would always recommend getting a set because you play about with them. Oh, yeah, you know, we've got the set coming up It's always worth later. just having a whole set of hooks. But people who are going to make this, I reckon they'll already have crochet hooks. Quite possibly, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's made using a traditional granny square. Right. So when I came on doing the jumper, we had a different type of granny square. But this one, I've gone back to my old favourite, the traditional granny square. Right. So this so is what my nan will have made. Exactly. Yeah. This is the one that's been around for absolutely years. All right. I'm not that old. <laughs> Thanks well, for do you that. Know what? I, I would have said 70s, but yeah. I Googled it last night and the first evidence of a granny square is in 1891. Oh, not that old, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, not that old. Okay. So I'll sh talk you through now how to make the traditional granny square. Okay, perfect. I'll just grab my hook. So you've got your colourways in the um, in the pattern. So you can then follow the colourways depending which one you're making. It'll talk you through the order to use your yarns in. Mm -hmm. So you're going to start with your slip knot on your hook, she says, that's it. And then you're going to chain four. And I'm using a four millimetre hook to demonstrate this. Okay. And then you just make a slip stitch in that very first chain, so the one that's right next to your knot. Mm -hmm. So you've got your chain of four, slip stitch in here. So you've made a tiny little circle. So the same way we start all the granny squares that I've demonstrated. So in the centre of there, you've got a little circle. So just keep an eye on where that circle is. And I have said when I've been on before, it's really, if you're quite new to it, and this is something that's really achievable make if you're new to crochet, it's a really nice straightforward one. Uh -huh. um, you might want to use a stitch marker to mark the oh, centre of the circle. I'll show you those circle. data. They are underneath us on the website. So. If you want to just keep track of where your stitches are going to go, because we're going to put a lot of stitches in here, you can put a stitch marker in this hole here, just so that you don't lose track of it. Okay. Then you chain three in the air, and that's your pretend first treble. And then you're going to do two trebles in this ring. So yarn over, and you're going to put your hook into the center of this circle. Grab the yarn and put it through to the front. Gives you three loops on your hook. Grab the yarn and come through two, leaving two, grab the yarn and come through two. So that's your treble crochet. And then you make another one of those. And then you've got your first little group of three. So granny squares, traditional ones, yeah. I've always worked with groups of three. Right. So you've got your, your chain three and two trebles. You're then going to do a chain two in the air, which makes a corner. And you're going to make three more trebles back in the same hole. So yarn over and what you might want to do is work around the tail as well as the chains because then at the end you can pull that tail to tighten it okay. and it gathers it all together. Yeah. So then three more in there. Uh, Michelle says these would be perfect for Christmas Eve for the family instead of Christmas pyjamas. What a brilliant idea, I love that. <laughs> uh, Denise says, been looking forward to this show. Emma and I love these cardigans so much. We love it, John, when you model them as well. Best wishes from Denise and Emma. And Susan says, looking forward to the show. I love Sam and her granny squares. Oh, thank you. That's so lovely. Right, and then you're going to... So what you can see at the moment is I made a little corner of a square. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. So I've yeah. got my two sides with a corner here. And then you make another corner, which is a chain two. And then you're putting three more trebles in this ring here. So these groups of three make the edges of the square. And then one final, well, one not one final corner, one more <laughs> corner, and then one final set of three trebles. Rainbow children, two left, two left. Rainbow children, one in the box on your right-hand side of the screen. There's only two of those left. So you've made a little square shape, and then you chain two, and you're going to slip stitch the third of the three chain here. So just push your hook through that third chain, pull the arm back through there and straight through the loop on your hook. So there you've made the centre of your traditional granny square. 
and then you can just pull your yarn up, leaving yourself enough yarn to sew in later. Right. And just snip it here. So now you see your tail. What yes. did you say about the tail? So this crocheting it in the beginning tail, I crocheted around it as right. well as the chain. So now I can pull it and it uh, tightens up that little hole. Like a gathering thread exactly, thing. exactly, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. And um, quite often, when, especially when you're new to crochet, you can end up with a bit of a gaping hole in the middle yeah, of your yeah, granny yeah. square. And if you don't want that, that's a way of um, closing it up. Perfect. Another way is just weaving it in at the end with your okay. yarn needle. Do you have, listen to me, do you have a tension square setting at the <laughs> beginning? Or do you not so I it? have, for every um, square, that's a really good question because I should have mentioned it at the beginning. Oh, no, no, no. I but, I'm, I'm learning, you see. And I can't think, <laughs> for every square, so if you've decided on your age, for every square in the pattern, it tells you how big your square should be once you've made so it. So you make the first so one have, and you measure exactly, it. Exactly. Make your first one according to the pattern with however many rounds you need. Right. And then make measure it and check it's the same size as I've said in the pattern. What happens if it's bigger or smaller? Does your garment just come up bigger or smaller? It does. Or So if you want to avoid that, you can just, if it's smaller, if your squares come up smaller than I have said it should, you can go up a hook size. Right. If it's come up larger, go down a hook size. Okay, so Try un again. Unravel it and start again. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, once you're kind of, you know, once you've had a bit of practice, it don't take long to make, but um, so it's not too I bad. I think I just carry on making it was too big and go, you can grow into this. Yeah, you? there is that option too, <laughs> definitely. And there's a few variations we can make along the way to adjust the sizing as well, which okay. I'll talk about in a Perfect. moment. Yeah, so lovely. there's that as well. Okay. So I'll just go through a few rounds of the granny square because it's one of those things, once you've got the idea of it, then you can make it as big as you like. Yeah, so as I said, for different sizes, you make different size granny squares. So let's go. OK, I'm not actually following the sequence. I should follow the sequence. It should be turquoise next. Now, you said on the on the little one over there, you've just got your central colour, second colour and then your background colour. Yes. Mine I've got one, two, three, four before I get to my background colour. Exactly. Color, I? Yeah, that's right. So that's one of the ways I've done the variation in the sizes. Yeah. So the other way is the hook size you use. But to make some of the children's ones, you've done, you're doing smaller granny squares. So you're just doing rounds of three. Again, it says that in that table at the beginning of your pattern. Okay, perfect. Rainbow S children sold out. This table's oh. going to be empty soon. <laughs> I love the rainbow one. That's this one. That's the one I'm wearing. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. The colours are so lovely. Just goes with so many things. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, for the, for the youngest children's ones, you're doing just a little square of three rounds. That final round, however many rounds your um, instructions tell you to do, the final round will always be in the main colour. Oh, of course, okay? yes. Okay. So, and again, it goes through all of that in the pattern. So you're joining your new colour in any of the corner spaces. Blossom children sold out. So I've only got children <laughs> in blue now. So Sorry to keep interrupting you. That's OK. Yeah. It's great. I'm glad they're selling. So, so no matter how many colours you do, the last one you do is always the, the base colour. So exactly. be navy blue in this, be grey in this, yeah. be in the cream Cream in, in mine. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So you put your hook through the corner space and bring through a loop of the new colour. And then you make one chain to secure it. So you've joined your new colour yeah. in the corner space. Uh -huh. You then chain three in the air. And again, that's my fake treble. So that's yeah. masquerading as a treble. And then you do two trebles in that same space. So again, we're looking at groups of three. So with anything that's a traditional granny, it's these little groups of three. So with that chain three pretending to be one plus two trebles. Mm -hmm. Then you chain two in the air. And then we're going to make another three trebles back in this same space. And that turns the corner. Yeah. So when you're on a corner of your granny square, you're putting two sets of three trebles in the same space. Uh, Jacqueline, I'm afraid the, the, the pattern is only available in the kit at this moment in time. It's not available on its own. She loves, she loves your design, but she wants to know if the pattern is available. Yeah, just okay. in case. Okay, so then you've done your little corner there, and then you chain one, and that little chain one takes you down the side of the square. So it's just enough to hop over these three trebles here. Right. And then you go into the next corner space. So that's what's cut, creating the holes, isn't Exactly, it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, granny squares, a traditional granny square, it's like a pattern of blocks and holes, that's yeah. how I think of it. And then in the next corner, you're putting your three trebles. Uh-huh. 
Sally says it would be fabulous for Glastonbury. Oh, it Sally. It really would. You. Like, what you, the rainbow one is such a festival one. Yeah. So oh, three I knew that trebles, was banging the doors. Chain no, two one. and another three trebles. So when you're on a corner, uh -huh. you've always got your set of three trebles, a chain two and another set of three. So you can see that's taken me around that corner there. Okay. Chain one again to take me down the side. So I'll just demonstrate three rounds of this traditional granny. Yeah. Just to get you into yeah, the Yeah, because we need to talk about um, how all, different, all the other things blocking. There's a lot of, yeah, there's, there's a lot, lot of other, other elements to, to it. There. Um, I'll just do that corner. So in your corners, the golden rule is in the corners, you do three trebles, chain two, three trebles. Uh -huh. So two sets of three. Chain one to take you down the side. And then in the next corner, last corner, three trebles. Chain two, three trebles. Okay. And you can How quickly it comes together. <laughs> it does. Love, you can't beat it. You know, I've been crocheting for years and years, but my favourite is still the traditional granny oh, square. Wow. I just love it. Yeah. And it. It's so therapeutic. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to do a challenging pattern with mm. lots of different stitches in, but you cannot beat the calmness that a traditional granny square brings. Yeah. It's, and actually, it's funny because the, my lovely friends who made the samples all said the same. It's so nice just to sit and do a traditional oh. granny. Okay, so then one final chain one. Yeah. And then you've got your chain three that you started, that was your first pretend treble. Yeah. You're going to do a slip stitch in the third of those again. So th push it through there, bring the yarn back through and straight through the loop on your hook. Okay. And so then you, you pull it right Pull yeah. it up and snip it at the top. So these... So what are you going to do with those loose ends? You're going you... to weave them all in at the end. So, so there's a lot of those. <laughs> there are a lot of ends. And, and you have to weave it in. You do need to sew them in because you and and I will talk through in a minute okay. uh, how to sew them in securely Perfect. because you do not want them to come undone. Okay, lovely message so. from Sadie saying, "Hi John, ordered mine. Love Sam, and <laughs> she's restored my love of crochet. Thank you so much, from Sandy, not Sadie. Sandy. That's so lovely. Thank you, Thanks. Sandy. I'm so pleased to hear that. Oh, how lovely is that? That's so nice. Yeah. That's just brilliant. Anyway, don't get big headed. Carry All right. on. I'm just basking <laughs> right, in right. it. You're basking in your glory for a minute, and then you carry okay, on. Okay. So, what colour next? So, I always say with the granny squares, you know it's on track if it looks squarey. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to look like a square. So sometimes you might have accidentally added a bit where it shouldn't be, right, and it okay. looks funny. So you really quickly notice if it doesn't yes. look right, which and is also, brilliant. And also, you'll notice now, not when it's completely finished. Exactly. Won't you? You'll, be able to you'll look, look now at it and, and think, it, yeah. well, why is that corner flat? I yeah. haven't done two sets in it, for example. Yeah. Okay. So just want to demonstrate the third round, just to give you the idea for continuing onwards. Yeah. Again, joining the corner, you'll notice I tend to turn mine, taking me away from where I've got my slip stitches oh, and things. Yeah. Two reasons. It keeps it straighter. And also, um, <laughs> I don't have to worry about those bits with tails hanging out of them for a while. OK, so hook through the corner, put a loop on, put it through, chain one to secure it. And then you're doing chain three. So it's exactly the same every round. So there's a, that's where the therapy comes from because it's uh, just so nice and repetitive. Are you so adding nice any stitches repetitive. or is it the same amount of stitches So the, the increase happens in the corners because you do those two sets of three. So you are effectively adding that extra set but of three corners, every corner. But only the corner, the rest of it's the same. Exactly. So then I'm doing chain two in the air and three more trebles in that same corner space. Uh -huh. And then the only thing that differs as you go along on this round, you've got these chain one spaces here. Uh -huh. So you do a chain one. So when you're moving around the edge of the granny square, you do a chain one, takes you into the next space, do three trebles in there. So the more rounds you have on your granny square, the more of these edge spaces yes. you have. So if I just show you one of the bigger ones, you can see every round you get more of these holes. Right. And that's yes, where yes, I of think course, of it as yes. filling in the gaps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you work along. That's it. You have to to make yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise it wouldn't grow, would exactly. It? Yeah. So three trebles into the chain one space, chain yeah. one, three trebles, chain one, three trebles. Okay. Okay. And then that takes me into the next corner. And I'm going to do three trebles. And then chain two. And then three trebles in there. And that just gives you the idea 
of how you continue on with your granny square and how it grows. Uh -huh. So just remember that when you're working down the side, you just do chain ones, chain one, three treble, and then a chain one, and then you're into the next corner. Uh -huh. So the only place that you're doing your chain two is in the corner where you've got two sets of three. But it's all in the instructions as well. So let me just do this bit to show you. Okay. I think that's probably gives you the idea and that's this is where <laughs> you know if you've got a square shape coming because have a look at it every now and then occasionally when I'm working with people you like end up with an extra bit here right so you got carried away and put a corner in there and then you okay. have more of a star <laughs> shape so so just have a look at it every now and then and make sure it's still keeping its shape yeah. and as you say and it, you can if you've gone wrong halfway down there you only have to undo to where your mistake exactly is, don't you? You yeah then... yeah exactly just take it back to where the mistake is and correct that bit so Perfect. yeah so All right then Take that us on some of your techniques now. Ignore that clock because our clock in here is wrong. Oh, What's okay. Oh, yes. I can see it in the corner of the screen. Okay. It's, at the moment, it changes. Ahead. It's five minutes slow at the moment. Okay. So it's 25 to it. Okay. So, just so, so I just so the other things I'd like to go through. I yep. just want to briefly talk about the triangular granny square. You haven't got any on yours, but okay. the V neck oh, has yes. triangular granny squares. So yeah. um, the blue one behind blue you one behind me, has Emma. got two, and the child's one, they were just showing the rainbow There's one. There's only there. 10 left of the blue adult one. Uh, there, you see the corner, though. And blue child is the only child option available now, and there's only seven of those. Right. Okay, so just wanted to briefly talk you through. Now, the only time you're going to need a triangle is if you decide on the V-neck. Right. And you only need two of them, because right. you'll put them oh, here yeah. at the top. Yeah. So you'll do your rows of your traditional granny squares, but the thing that shapes it into a V-neck is having the triangle at the top there. Okay. But it's a different thing to make, so I just want to talk you through starting one of those. Perfect. Okay. Uh, as I'm watching, Sam weaves the tails. Oh, as I'm watching, I'm weaving the tails in on my first 12 squares for my baby blanket, says Susan. And then Samantha says, I made cable jump for someone once. I didn't notice I'd done an extra twist until after I'd given it to her. Oh, oh I no. bet they didn't notice. I think we're always really hard on ourselves when we yeah. make mistakes like yeah. that. But I bet they didn't notice. No, of course not. Right, OK. So, so this is the triangle. This now. is the triangular bit. So again, you're starting with a chain of four. Yeah. And you're slip, sti slip stitching it to the first one. So it starts in the same way. You then do a chain five and you're going to make two trebles. So you've got this little ring that you've made your chain four again. Two trebles in there. So do we start, are we still starting not, at the middle? Not in the two, middle, sorry, the three. Beginning, and the little yes, one in the middle, yeah. yes, we're still starting at the beginning, but right. we're not going to complete it. Right. So it was three trebles now. So you've got that chain five and then you've got three trebles. Right. Then you chain two. And then you make three more trebles. Okay, so you've got this little triangle shape coming now. Yeah. Then you chain one and you make one treble in the same space. So they've all gone in that same circle in the middle. And you can see instead uh, of a whole yeah. square, you've got yeah, a triangle. Yeah, yeah. Snip that off. Okay, and then you're going to put your next colour in, and the next colour starts. So we've fastened off here. Uh -huh. We're going to join here the on the opposite. Again. So yeah, exactly. We're always joining at the beginning. Okay. So hook goes through that space, the space that's made by the chain five. Join your new colour. Mm -hmm. Again, chain five. Make three trebles in that same space. So all the instructions are in the pattern. I just really wanted to show you to give a bit of context. When you come to make it, you can look back at the YouTube video and yeah, you've course, got all yeah. that um, sort of idea of where you're going with it. Uh, Susan, I've just bought the blocking board. Yes, I'm going to show us how to use it. Yes, she is Sue in Tamworth. She's going to show you how to use it. And then chain one, like with the yeah. other granny squares, over to the corner. And in there, you're putting your three trebles. Chain two three trebles. Okay. And then you chain one again. And in the final space, you're putting three trebles. 
and a chain one, and then one more treble. So you've got your triangle shape growing there. Uh -huh. And then you, you put, pull that one up and then you can start, go back to the beginning again. Do exactly the same again, yeah. Why, why do you have to start at the same place? Because if, even if you start at this corner, you'd still be going in a triangle, wouldn't you? So if you started at this corner, you'd have to turn it over. So I was just being oh, extra fussy. Oh, no, okay. no I, I'm about, asking No, that. it's okay, a good thanks. question because um, with all my granny squares, I always work all the stitches on the same, same side. Time. Some people do turn them over, but mm. especially for a cardigan where you've got an inside and outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've kept it all on the same side. So your tops of your stitches are always on the no, same no, side. I just, I, no, but that's, it's a good yeah. question. And some people will be wondering why I've done that with the granny square as well. Okay, so fine. yeah, that answers that. Okay, perfect. So with that triangle, you just continue on exactly the same way. Start in the corner. Do your chain five and three trebles, and then move into this space uh -huh. and do three trebles, chain one. So it's just the same thing, just conscious of the time for showing yeah, the no, other no, stuff. Yeah, no, no, that's right. And you just again. finish with your finish with your base colour. Finish again. with your base colour right. again, and again the same number of rounds as you have for your squares, which is all in that chart at Perfect. the beginning. Right, so, so that's a triangle. What's yeah. the next thing you're going to okay. show? Okay, so there's a little bit of talk about joining and edging. So which takes me on actually. Oh, I know, so many things I wanted to say. I'm yeah. going to talk about the weaving in at this point as well. Oh, okay. the right, okay, so all those loose ends. Yeah, exactly. So, when you've made all your squares, you probably want to block them. Sadly, it's just sold out, but we're going to carry on with the demonstration. Oh, <laughs> well, the blocking board. Yeah, the blocking board is <laughs> sold out. Okay. So. <laughs> we will get them back in, don't worry, but for today, they've sold out. Right. Okay, so. What you, do, what you do when you've finished all your squares, you don't have to block them, but it does make it look that bit nicer if you block them before you join them Same all together. Well. So um, with your blocking board, these are great. So you get these dowels with them. Uh -huh. You get more than four, I've just got four out. And you set these at the size you want your granny squares to be. So obviously that would depend of course. on yeah, which yeah, granny yeah. squares you've been making. And then you dampen your squares <laughs> so you can, there's several ways you can do it. Rebecca washes hers. We were having a conversation about this. So you yeah. can hand wash them, maybe put some softener in, makes them smell really lovely. Sort of carefully um, wring them out, really, really carefully. Or put them in a towel and press them to get the water out. Or you can mist them with a mister, like a plant mister. Okay. Or I use the steam setting on my iron. I don't touch it, but I just hold the iron above, okay. put it on steam, and, it, and that just immediately dampens and makes all the yarn relax. Okay. So whichever way you choose, you dampen your square. So mm -hmm. it can be really wet or just a bit damp. Either thing is fine. And then you put it on your, as I say, you set where you want your square to be. And you can put, we'll have more than four dowels. I yeah. can't remember whether you get eight or 12, but so you can put there more than one 12. set on. 12. In okay. the one we had, yeah. yeah. And then imagine these have been dampened. You put them all on at the size you want them to be, and you can pile them up on top of each other. So you can get about 10 squares oh, on oh, there. So I was about to say, oh, you'd have to have one there, one yeah. there, one there. So have I got any more dowels with you? What I tend to do, I think I have, I tend to do oh, something like this. And then use those. My next one goes over that set, and then I alternate them. And you now, get... don't they go mouldy? No, put them, I mean, if they've made them very wet, put them in front of a radiator or something. If right. you've just dampened them, they can just sit and in that's the, all on you the do. side. That's what that's all is. you do, that's what blocking is. If you want them extra blocked, you know, you can put, instead of like do, distributing your dowels like that, you can put them around the square yeah. like so, so they're ex even extra more carefully blocked. But you can put them, you can pile them up on top. Do you leave yeah. a gap between them? I, I tend to use, leave like half a centimetre gap. Yeah, yeah, so the air so can, can breathe still get a bit. Them, yeah, maybe, so don't yeah. press them right down. Yeah. I tend to leave just a tiny gap. Oh, okay. And then however long they take to dry, with mine, where I just dampen them with the steam setting on the iron, they're dry within an hour or two. Oh, perfect. But whatever it takes, and then you're, it really does make a lovely difference to the way they look. Okay. So loose okay. ends you wanted to do next Oh, to do. yes, yes. So for your ends, now you'll end up with lots of ends yeah. on the back of your oh, square. Oh, you see, that's where I'd go, mm. <laughs> So people are really divided about whether they like ends or not. I actually quite like sewing ends in. So um, I'm quite happy to sew. I let a pile of about 15, 20 build up and then I just sit for an hour or so in front of the telly and sew them all in. Okay. But my word of caution is please be careful to sew them in extra carefully because when it's something you're going to wear and it's sort of stretching and being moved about and 
in my case, I do put them in my washing machine. You can hand wash them, obviously, but yeah. you know this is 100% acrylic. It can be washed as other clothes. But when you're going to be doing that, you really don't want it to come undone. No. So just be extra careful to have we weaved, woven them in yeah. carefully. So what I tend to do is on the back, because as I said, I've got a right and a wrong side. So hang side. on, you've got like a bodkin, a darning needle. I've there? got a yarn needle, a yeah. A yarn needle. I haven't got those. I, do, I, I know they do sell them. Um, right. So there's various ones you can get. This is just a metal yarn needle or dar darning needle. Okay. So what you want to do is work where that colour is. So where my um, purple is here, and I like to work not at the top of the stitches, but around the base of the stitches where it's thicker. Right. And you're going to push your yarn needle close to where the yarn's coming out. And this is where they call it weave it in, but you just basically want to go through the centre of the stitches. Right. So go in one direction. Yeah. All the other bits want to join in and pull it a bit gently. And then I'm going to go around even more. Now, if you had a full granny square there, would you do the outside colour first or do you always start on the inside colour? This is just pure preference, but I like to start on the inside. Doesn't make so any I difference. I've never thought about it before. I think maybe because it pulls this bit in a little bit, so then oh, you can okay. just do... I just think I if don't you have the outside makes... in, you've got no other threads, no other yarn. This is true. There. That, that is true. Yeah, so whatever your preference is. Yep. Then... Once you've gone around in one direction, the important thing is to turn around. Well, I think this is important. Some people don't. Don't you know? If you you can keep going around and around in the same direction, but I like to double back. Right. So pushing through a different place, doubling back, and then I my word of caution is keep going until you can feel because what you're aiming to do is mesh the fibres together like felting. So instead of tying a knot. Um, you want all your fibres to felt together, and you can feel that. If you pull at the yarn, yeah. you can well, feel because, whether well, it's you're loose doing this, or not. Aren't you? You're actually creating exactly. fabric, you're weaving, your yarn's going that way, and you're thro throwing, not throwing, sewing exactly. your yarn and through it, so you're actually making a fabric. That's, out of it, that's yeah. right, and you can feel when the texture of the um, yarn changes when you're doing that, and you really want it to get to that stage so it doesn't come undone. Um, and, the, and we now love this King Cole yarn because although it's 100% acrylic, it has a slightly woolly feel to yes, it. Yes, yeah. And that works really well for weaving in. And you can't just knot it then? If you, some people do not, and I am very much um, the kind of person who says it's your hobby, have fun with it and do it however yeah, it works yeah, yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. My only concern is it might come undone in the washing machine, okay. but then you might hand wash yours. So yeah. that's, <laughs> that's just me, I've thrown it in the washing machine. Yeah. Okay, and once you've woven it in and you're happy it's meshed together, snip that yarn off close as yep. you can get to the work Perfect. so that's how I weave the ends in so if you've got an end that's as you get to the very end I don't know if I've got one here you'll have um, an end of yarn that's at the top of your work so I would push that through the stitch next to it turn it over and still move the end of the yarn down into the base of the stitches that's on your outside exactly on your, on your final one. piece yeah. because um, you really want to not be working into the tops of these Vs. You're going to use those for joining. Oh, okay. So, so you go inwards rather exactly. than Exactly. So go down a little bit to yeah. the base of the stitches so to I work don't that. remember my doing that bit. I remember her sitting there <laughs> doing all the crocheting. I don't remember her sitting there weaving all the bits in. <laughs> she probably did that later on in front of the telly with a you glass of wine. Bed, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, how are we getting on? She was a Mackerson girl, not a wine girl. Oh, was she? <laughs> <laughs> Mackerson. <laughs> anyway, Karen, uh, how are we doing for time? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, Ten brilliant. Minutes. Okay, so when you've made all your squares, you've woven in the ends, you've blocked them all, you then join them together. Um, and you've got grids in the pattern that show you how to do that. So you've got the grids for everything there. You've got okay. fronts, backs. There's a lot of work gone into these. <laughs> There's a lot of work. That's why I said it's the ultimate granny square yeah. pattern. <laughs> Um, okay, so you lay them all out as your grid shows you. Check you like the look of it. You can even take a quick photograph with your phone, make sure you like how they're laid out and it helps you remember where they all go. And then you need to join them together. So I double crochet them together. So you can slip stitch, you can sew if that's what you prefer to do, okay. but this is how I do it. So you're going to put them right sides facing. So you've got the back side that you've just weaved all your ends in. That's, mm -hmm. that's facing out at the moment, right sides facing in. Put your hook through the corner of both of them and pull a bit of yarn through. Chain one, 
Backstreet says the blocky board will be back in stock by the end of the week, everybody. End of the week. You've got Rebecca <laughs> Reed's word for that. Okay, sorry, carry on. Okay, and then into the chain space, pull the arm back through, gives you two loops on your hook. You're going to make double crochets, pull through two. And then you just work along and you go underneath the V of the first stitch and underneath the V of the second. So you're putting your hook underneath four strands of yarn. Pull the yarn back through, gives you two loops on your hook, yarn over through both. So you're going to do that into each of the three stitches and then one into the chain space because we did a chain one space there. Right. And all the way along, one into each of the stitches and then one into the chain space. Can you see these stitches? Do you call them stitches in crochet? Yes. Can you see yeah. that the, you're, I mean, you're using grey and grey and grey. Would you be able to see the stitches? Would it make a nice effect if you did them in the yellow or something you like that? You could do. I'll show when you open it up. Now, you can do it on the right side and you get this little ridge. So if I just show you on the back, okay. on the front, sorry. Yeah, yeah. When you open it up, you can barely see it because it's in the grey, okay, but so you yeah, would see that bit in your yeah, yellow. Yeah. But if you decided to do it as a feature, if you do your double crochets on the front instead, you get this ridge running down oh, the centre. Like yeah. But then where would the different colour, I don't expect you to so do it now, but where would it look like, oh, she's used the wrong colour? It would, would look like the whole thing's framed. It would look like a grid, you know, oh, the whole okay, thing would be yeah. framed in yeah, that yeah, colour. Yeah, yeah, if you used a so, different colour, if you used yeah, a different colour to do it. Just one different colour here, yeah. like a strand, oh, okay. so like a look kind like of gingham-y type. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be okay. nice. No, nice. Okay, so that's how you join that. Right. So you'll go all the way along to the end. And I just want to talk about the ribbing. Yes, please. Also, I love this. Whatever this is, oh, the yes. three stripes, I'd quite like it as well, just made out of those kind of things as well, rather than, because they're not done granny squares, are they? They're called granny stripe. Right. So that is, I'll talk about those quickly first. Yeah, so sorry. when you come to do, as we finish, by this point, you'll have assembled your whole card and you'll have your blocks. So I said this with the jumper as well. What you can do is sew it together or stitch marker it together or pin it together and try it on. Yes. And if there's any part you want it to be bigger, you can do your granny stripe. So this is in the pattern. Right. And the granny stripe that you were just showing us is basically like the granny square, but you go, you work along in a straight line, you work right. in a row doing those three trebles. Oh, she's not coming at me. Here I am holding <laughs> it up for her. Don't she's coming to me. <laughs> So it's on, it's on your cuffs and it's on the bottom oh, yeah, of the cardi as well. Oh, I'll show you the cuff It's on the cuff So there. those, yeah, you can do those in a colour. Yeah. So whatever you've got, like, so when you get to this stage, you can be looking at what you've got left yeah. and thinking what you want to work with. And I've talked about um, quantities in the pattern, how much yarn you'll need towards the end. So actually, Terry ann has put granny stripes around this one, but she's done oh, it she's all in the cream, cream. Oh, which is lovely right. too. Oh, not as good Terry ann I'm afraid. <laughs> Who made mine? Yours, me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not giving another compliment. <laughs> okay, so you're going to, for the granny stripe, you join in the corner. Yeah. So same way as before, chain three and make two trebles in that same space. So that makes your little group of three. And then you chain one, move along into the next space and make three trebles in there. So it's exactly the same idea, but you're working in a straight line, so you don't have those corners. Yeah. Chain one again, move into the next space, make one in there. So you're always working in groups of three. So you're just continuing oh, on the idea. It's simple. Really yeah. straightforward. Yeah. So and then you go all the way along to the end. Yeah. And then you can either continue in the same colour or fasten off and join a new colour. Do you go back to the beginning, though, if you're doing stripes? Don't no, I have done it that I turned, actually, with oh, this one. Oh, OK. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but you could go back to the beginning if you prefer. Yeah. But, yeah, so then you can either do it in stripes. You can add it wherever you like in the cardigans. I noticed when I was doing this that Terry Ann's put some here on the front okay. panel. Look. Mm -hmm. OK. So that's that. Right. Now, the final edging, which is this part, this ribbing on the cuff. Yeah. I'll just talk oh. you through how, have I got time to go Yeah, through? no, you've got time. I just heard something going off next door. <laughs> that was all. Okay. We've got, we've got about two and a half to three minutes of, of stitching. Okay. So imagining this is the assembled cardigan and yeah. you're ready and you've done all your granny stripes and you're ready to add your ribbing. So I've done that in the main colour, but there's nothing to stop you doing that in one of the complementary colours. 
just make sure you've got enough yarn left. For the adult one, it took me 100 grams of yarn, yeah. and for the child one, it was about 75. But okay. I put that all in the pattern. So let's do it in a complementary colour. Okay, so chain three. And then you're going to work along just making trebles. So treble in the same place. Whoops. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> one into each of the next stitches. One into the chain one space. So the same principle, but this time you're just putting one treble in everything. So you start with that. And then I just want to go through the ribbing. So I'm just going to go a little way along. Yeah. Okay. It's all in the pattern though, isn't it? All in the yeah. pattern. Yeah. There's photographs and everything. So then when, imagine that's the end of my cardigan. I've done yeah. a row of trebles. Chain three. I have turned with this. It looks the same front and back. Yeah. And then you're going to do a front post treble and a back post treble. Right. So for these, instead of working into the V at the top of the stitch, yeah. you're working around the post. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. you need to identify the next post, yeah. which is that, that sort of thick part of the stitch. Yeah. It's quite obvious, I can see it. From yeah, there, yes. so yarn over, because it's a treble. And if you're right-handed, you put your hook from the front for the front post treble, from the right to the left. Right just under that post, yeah. so not through it, just literally underneath it. Yeah. Grab the yarn, put it back through. You've got your three loops on your hook, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. Right. If you're left-handed, it's exactly the same, but you'll go from left to right. Oh, so okay. you work, just work in the opposite yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. That's the front post treble. For the back post treble, again, the same thing. You find the next post along, and you're coming in from behind it because it's the back. So always bring your hook from behind for the back post, out again the other side, and you'll see it's at the back. Your hook is at the back of the work. Pull the yarn through. Hook is still at the back of the work. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And then you alternate front post, back post, and that's what gives it that ribbing look. Uh -huh. And that's all you do all the way along. You just alternate them all the way along. And that just causes the ribbing. And that gives you the ribbing. Brilliant. Thank you. I've, you've done so much in this hour. Well done, <laughs> well done. Very, very quickly now. Um, there's very little left to show you. So I've got, what's in at the moment? Adult in rainbow. Oh, there's ten. There's, I thought you said adult rainbow. There are ten of those left. Ten rainbow adult. Uh, uh, um, rainbow adult. That's this one. Blue adult. There's one left. Oh, there's one left. So that will be gone. That will be gone. The only child option we've got is the blue skies one. And well, it'll look like that, but small. And there's how many of those? Seven, did you say? Seven of those left. Seven of those left. That's it. That's it. Right? The blocking boards are sold out. The um, toggles are about to sell out. One ninety nine for five. And my zing hook set, which is in here. Oh no, I should have been ready for this. <laughs> I can't get the zip open, there's something wrong with the ring pull. <laughs> I'm only joking. Look, all the gorgeous colours in there. Goes, so if, it depends on, if you suddenly need to change the size, you've got all the sizes there ready. £26.99. pence. There are single hooks, but they're all listed on these. I've not got time to go through them now. Shall we have a look at, oh no, no, there's no menu. Say, when is uh, Yarn Lane back then? Friday with Wendy and since oh yes, it's Lily Louise, the great big knitted animal heads, which absolutely when they were on last time they flew out. And I tell you what, the big heads went quicker than the small heads did. So that's on Friday with Wendy. Um, thank you so much, company. Thank you, Sam, for Welcome. thank you, my lovely cardigan, which I've got to give back now. I'm afraid. <laughs> um, I've got Yarn Lane on Saturday. When, do you know when you're back in? 2nd of June. 2nd of June. What day of the week is that? Wednesday. It's me. Uh, it's me. Uh, anyway, thanks ever so much for your company. Please make sure you check out your bus. Don't want you to miss anything. And I'll see you on Sang Street on Saturday morning. But enjoy Wendy for the next couple of days.